that, who's been to Fear Factor before? Make some noise. Raise your hand. Let's go. Who's, who's never been to Fear Factor before? Let me know right now. Yeah? Wow. That's a lot of you. That's a lot of you. I'm pumped. I, I don't think these guys hyped it up enough. Fear Factor is by far the best event of the whole year, man. 10,000 pieces of candy is crazy. And, and uh, can I win the Jordans? Is there like, a, is there like a, no leaders, no leaders. That's okay. Hey, um, if you've never, do we have any first timers actually? Who's, who's first time at Risen? We got a couple. Yeah, we got a few. Hey, make some noise. That's awesome. Well, if you've, uh, if you've never been to Risen, we're going to take the next few minutes, and I'm just going to hang out with you. I'm going to tell you a few stories, and then we've got a sweet after party. We're going to do some pumpkin carving afterwards, but we are in week three of our series on evangelism right now, and week one, uh, who remembers when Noel talked with uh, on week one? Who was here? Who was here? He, he talked about the gospel a little bit and shared some stories. Who remembers last week when Luke spoke? And uh, you remember that light analogy? That was awesome. He said that you guys uh, have a responsibility to evangelize and be the light to others around you. And today, I want to get really, really practical with you guys and show you guys how we can evangelize. What, is, what does this mean and how can we practically do it. And at first glance, evangelism is kind of this big word. It kind of seems complex. But I want to show you guys today that it's actually not complex at all to share Jesus with people around you and to invite others to church and to risen and to fear factor and really to show people how cool life can get when you are in relationship with Jesus. And, and evangelism is so, so important because Everybody needs to meet and experience Jesus. Reaching the youth of Edmonton with the gospel, with the good news of Jesus, is what Risen Youth is created to do. That's what we're doing right now. But Risen Youth is way, way bigger. The, our vision and our mission is way bigger than what we do here on a Friday night. It, it's way bigger than, than what we're doing within these four walls right now. And I, I'm pretty sure we're going to actually outgrow this room pretty soon. It, it's looking like it because we are here to grow God's kingdom. But how do we, how do, we do this? Well, I want to submit to you right now that it actually starts with you. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for each and every student in here at Risen tonight. I pray over these next few minutes that you would speak individually and specifically to them, God, that, that names or faces would pop into their head that they um, need to invite to Fear Factor next week. God, that you would use each and every one of these students um, to reach people for your kingdom and your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, we're going to take the next few minutes and uh, I'm going to break down a story in the Bible for, for you. It's from John 4 and it's, it's about a woman at a well. Let me, let me kind of paint the picture for you about what's going on. Jesus, who's the son of God, he's traveling between two places. So he's going from A to B and it's about 150 kilometers between the two places. It's similar to he, from here to Red Deer and, and they're on foot and they're traveling and that's a pretty long distance and so... In between the two spots, they had to go through this place called Samaria. And they show up in this little village in Samaria. And the Bible says that Jesus became worn out. His, his disciples that he was with, he was with these guys. And they were hungry. And so they left, went to get food, probably Chick-fil-A. They like dipped out. And then we pick up in verse 6. It says, Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, worn out from his journey sat down at the well. It was about noon. Man, let me, let me pause here for a second. If I wanted to give you, let me give you a quick spoiler alert. Jesus is about to do something really cool. He's about to evangelize and have a conversation with a woman, but it says he's worn out. And I don't know, this, this kind of just struck me. Like sometimes I feel like I forget that because Jesus is, is perfect, I, I forget that he's also human. But this shows us that even when Jesus was worn out, um, he, he's about to, to make a difference. And so it shows us that, that God can use us to reach others no matter what stage we are at. It means you can share the good news with people no matter what stage you're at 
right now. You don't need to come up with a perfect method to, to do it first. You don't need to become some kind of super Christian or you don't need to know the entire Bible, but God can use you today exactly where you are right now to reach the people around you. And, and if you're willing, he can use you this week to invite people to Fear Factor and to share this good news. If we jump back to the story, Jesus is sitting there and, and he's likely about to pass out. It's the middle of the day. It's hot. It's sunny. And that's when uh, a Samaritan woman, she shows up and she's coming to this well to draw water. And Jesus asks her for a drink from the well. And this was a little bit odd at the time because Jesus was a Jew and typically they don't like associate with Samaritans. They just had some like political and religious views that differed. But Jesus saw her for more than her background as a Samaritan. He, he saw her for who she really was, not for how the world saw her. And he knew that no matter who she was or what she did, that she needed to, to hear about God, that she was created to be in relationship with him. And man, the same is true for every single person that we encountered. We're called to share this message with everybody. The woman doesn't seem to see what's going on yet. And so she asks Jesus why he would talk to her and, and ask for water when they typically wouldn't talk to each other. And we pick up in verse 13. Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again. In fact, the water I will give him will become a well of water springing up in him for eternal life. See, this whole, this whole water analogy can be a little bit confusing, but I, I don't think Jesus was really talking about water as much anymore. Let me, let me help explain it. To get water back then, people would have to haul these, these buckets to, and lower them. They were heavy. They had to lower them down into a well and then pick them back up by a rope, and then they had to walk them back home. This was physically hard. This was like, this, this was a lot. And they had to, in order to fill their need, they had to do something. They had to do some works. It could only be done by, by their works, but it never lasted. They always had to come back the next day. And this is a representation of what our life is like before we make a decision to follow Jesus. We're trying to fill the same thing, a void inside of us with things from this world. But they never actually fill that void within us. We always have to go back to a well that will never satisfy us. But Jesus has good news. He's talking about this living water. He's showing us that there's something, actually someone who can actually fulfill us. That he, he knows a well that won't run dry. And he's sharing it with this woman. And once, oh man, once you experience this, you... You don't need to try and fill this void in your heart with things of the world anymore, with, with different friend groups, with, with anything. You, your whole life is changed. That's why it's the good news. So let's break down what's happened so far. How can we follow this method to evangelize? First thing you got to do is you got to meet them where they at. Everybody say meet. meet. Say it louder. Meet. meet. You got to meet them where they at. See, Jesus clearly knew this woman was created to follow God. He, he didn't try to shove this information down her throat. He, he didn't do anything crazy. He just met this woman at the well right where she was. It was simple. Most testimonies don't typically begin in a church service, they begin when we meet somebody where they are, when we have a conversation in, in the hallway or the cafeteria at school, in a car ride, at the gym, when we meet somebody, when we take the first step on a walk with somebody, anything. It's these simple moments in life, meeting somebody right where they are. And sometimes this, this even happens when we least expect it. Today, I was talking to my neighbor, and she was just asking me what I was doing this weekend, and I, I told her, I was like, I'm going to youth group tonight. And she was like, what? What's a youth group? I said, well, my youth group is a part of my church. And then I told her all about church, and it, it was just so simple, such an easy 
conversation. Or if somebody asks you how, they're, how you're doing or you're talking about life in general, you can bring it up. It's so simple. You just, you have to take the first step and meet somebody where they at. Everybody say meet. The second thing you got to do is you got to sow them where to go. Everybody say sow. Sow them where to go. This is about pointing them in the right direction, but I'm talking about seeds. You got to sow some seeds. Just like a farmer, we are called to sow seeds into people. Matthew 13, verse 3 to 9 says, Consider the sower who went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it didn't have much soil, and it grew up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it. Still, other seed fell on good ground, and it produced fruit. Some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times what was sown. Here's what's good. Let anyone who has ears listen. I love that last sentence. Let anyone who has ears listen. I don't know what kind of soil I'm dealing with, but I'm going to sow everywhere. I'm going to tell everybody about this good news. And I can't wait until it produces fruit. What would happen if all of us started doing this? It's so simple. What does is, what is sowing a seed look like? It's inviting somebody to Risen on Friday, giving them these invites to Fear Factor. It's, it's praying with somebody, either with them or more commonly in private. It's, it's sharing. It's so simple. You could share Risen's posts on your story, and that could be a seed sown into their life. It's a conversation with somebody. It's inviting somebody to your connect group. The best way actually, is just to share your story with them. Just tell them how God has worked in you and through you and share your story with them and watch that. Watch them connect that into their life and, and that seed is sown into them. Let me tell you, you don't need to have the perfect method to do this. Sometimes it can feel almost burdensome, like this whole person's salvation is weighing on your shoulders. And that's not the truth, but you just need to be available for God to use you. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6 says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. I think sometimes this whole idea of evangelism can be scary or will avoid it because, yeah, like I said, we feel like it's our job to make uh, people transform their whole life. But that is not what weighs on your shoulders. But it, it is our job to plant the seeds. This week I was going through a filing cabinet and uh, I found this old Risen Camp registration from Risen Camp All In. Was anybody in the room at Risen Camp All In? I got two hands. I got two hands from the boomers in the back. And Risen Camp All In, it took place in Risen Camp 2015. Apparently in 2015 we didn't have computers because my mom had to fill this out, put the breakout sessions I wanted. I wanted to do canoeing and baking, apparently. Um, she put that. And, and I found this this week, and I was just reminded of Risen Camp and, and just the, the, the amount of life change that took place when I went to this camp, 2015. But before I went to this camp, for almost a whole year, people were inviting me. The most memorable, uh, I'm pretty sure the first one was Noel. He invited me. We were running sound together, and he invited me, but that didn't really work. And so after Noel invited me, there was a bunch of other people. Sean, Corey, Emma, Adam, Isaac, Kendall, Josh, Ben, Carmen, Jose, Emily, Maria, Trista, and a ton more invited me. That's just who I can remember. And each one of those was a seed. And then at church, I went to church on Sunday. If you're not coming to church on Sunday, you got to change that. I'll see you on Sunday. But at church on Sunday, they always talked about camp. That was another seed planted. And then my parents started asking me if I wanted to go to this camp. More seeds planted. And I saw so many posts about this camp online on 
Instagram, on, on YouTube. I kept seeing these videos about this bubble soccer game these guys were playing. I was like so pumped. Every single time I saw one of those, it was a seed planted. And then I made the decision finally to go to Risen Camp. And I, and I kind of felt like that was the finish line, but that's not true. That was actually the starting line. Because then at Risen Camp, my dorm leader had conversations with me every single day. And those were seeds planted that pushed me to make a decision for Jesus. Every service I went to, there were moments, there were seeds planted in me. And by the time I got to the end of the week, my leader asked me if I wanted to get baptized. And, and I remember it took me it took me a long time to answer him. Like, we were sitting beside each other, and I just kind of didn't say anything for, like, it was probably close to two minutes. And I was just, like, re-running through this whole week in my brain of all these seeds that were planted, of all these moments that finally led me to make a decision to get water baptized and to live a life for Jesus. You see, every single one of these seeds had a part to play in my story. Every single one of those invitations made a difference. Even when I said no, it still pushed me. It still made a difference. And I, I couldn't tell you who was planting the seeds, who was watering them, but they all made a difference in changing my life forever. The same is true for the seeds that you're planting in others, for the invitations that you're going to give out this week, for the conversations about youth group and fear factor. You might not see the growth yet, but those seeds are just about to take root. Every single one of them matters, and you are making a difference whether you see it or you don't see it yet. And the best part is none of these people had the perfect method, and none of these people had had it all together, but they were available, and all of those seeds made a difference in my life. So first, you got to meet, say meet, and then you got to sow, say sow, and then you got to repeat, say repeat. Evangelism, it's not, it's not a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle we're called to once we decide to follow Jesus. It's not just a one time thing. Matthew 28 says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. This is what we are created to do. It's something we're called to do for the rest of our lives, to share this good news with others. It, and it is good news. They have a Savior they don't have to keep going back to this well that will never satisfy the void within them. They, there's someone named Jesus that loves them and died on a cross for them. And they can live forever in eternity if they just give their life to him. So that's my method for evangelism. Meet, so repeat. Say it with me. Meet, so repeat. Faster. Meet, so repeat. Meet, so repeat. Wow, let's go. That's hype. You better remember that. You better remember that. Meet, so repeat. Here's what can happen when you actually follow this method, when you evangelize. You see, Jesus, he met the woman at the well and he sowed a seed. He had a conversation with her and it changed her life forever. In verse 28, we pick up, it says, then the woman left her water jar, went into town, and told the people. That's crazy. She was so excited. Her life was changed forever. She shared the good news of Jesus with everyone around her, just like we are supposed to do. And then it says in verse 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in him, believed in God because of the woman's testimony. You got to catch this. Your seed can multiply. It's bigger than just that one invitation. It's bigger than just that one person. It, it could become their whole family. It could, it could become their whole class, your whole school, their entire friend group, having their entire lives changed because you were available and because you invited somebody. You planted 
that seed. This says that many Samaritans believed in him because of the woman's testimony, but the same is true for the seeds you're sowing. Let me just say many people can believe in God because of your testimony and because of the impact that you are gonna make in sharing this good news. Reaching the youth of Edmonton is what Risen Youth is created to do. But it starts with you. And so I, I wanna put this into practice right now. This might feel weird, but would you guys all just actually stand up right now and, and pull your phone out while you're doing that. Pull your phone out and actually raise your phone in the air. Let me see them, let me see them. And uh, right now, would you unlock your phone Unlock it if you got face ID. Do it if you don't got face ID. It's kind of lame. Open your phone. And right now, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give about 30 seconds. And would you right now invite three people to Fear Factor next week? As soon as you invite three people, you can sit down. So you can go on Instagram if you don't know what to do. You can go in our pinned post and you can share some of those posts with your friends. You can text. Text people who are not in the room and invite them to Fear Factor. Tell them they can win Jordans if they come. If it's their first time, we got candy for them. It's going to be awesome. And as soon as you invite three people, you can sit down. I'm going to give about a minute for this to happen. Once you're done, take a seat. Once you invited three people, take a seat. Wow. We're almost all done. Let me tell you guys, we um listen up, we have we have 193 people in this room right now 193 people and see every single one of us just texted three people every single one of us just sowed three seeds so that's if my math is correct 579 seeds were just planted to share the gospel and to evangelize come on but like, like Luke and Ephraim said, when you walked in here today, these invite cards were on your chairs. And we got more of them if you want more of them. But here's the best part is if all of us in the room invite one person a day over the next seven days to come to Fear Factor next week, that's 1,351 seeds. And so that's almost 2,000 seeds planted in total. That's going to lead to salvations. That's going to lead to life change. That's going to lead to baptisms. And that's because you were available and you evangelized. Come on, make some noise. That's so awesome. Okay, I just to close, I just want to share one, one really quick story. And uh, when I was in grade eight, I went to a school called Edith Rogers. It was awesome. And um, I was in grade eight, and my science teacher that year was retiring after my grade nine year. And, and my class, I don't know, there was something about it. It just felt like this big community. We were all together. We always hung out. It was like, you know how you would like be with your class at lunch and then, or in class and then eat with somebody else at lunch? It wasn't, it wasn't like that. We were like one big family and we found out our teacher was retiring and then we uh we loved this teacher she was our science teacher grade eight grade nine science and she loved us and she wanted to stay in contact with us and so we showed her she was boomer man but we showed her how to make an instagram 
account. And so our teacher's retiring. She made an Instagram account. And then we started a group chat with our whole class and with the teacher. And to this day, we still message it. And my class from grade eight and grade nine still meets for Boston Pizza once a year. And it's unreal. But that's not even the best part. This teacher made an Instagram account and then I had left grade nine, was going into grade 10, and um, I, uh, in December of my grade 10 year, had posted on my Instagram story, I said, come to Christmas Eve at my church. And I, I posted a couple invites that the church had posted, and she said, come to Christmas Eve. And she replied back so quickly. She said, I'll be there. And I was stoked. I'm like, no way my grade nine science teacher is about to come to church with me. Like, what is going on? This is so cool. And then she came on Christmas Eve, and I, I met with her after service, and she was weeping, just crying. She goes, Ben, I have never experienced anything like this. I said, what is that? I said, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. And, and we got to chat a little bit more, and I told her to come to church the following Sunday, and she did, and then she joined a connect group, and she got involved, and she met some of her friends, and then she made the decision to get water baptized, and this is what happened. Show, pull, pull up that picture of when she got water baptized. She was in the tank, and I was standing next to her. This is my science teacher getting baptized about a year after. How cool is that? Look at how weird I look. Look at those red shoes. What are you doing? But I, uh, I just posted on my Instagram story, and it was just one simple seed that changed her life forever. And she still follows Jesus. She since moved away, but is still a follower of Jesus. And and from the invitation to her making the decision to get baptized was almost a full year. It was about 11 months. And every single week along the way, there were seeds planted of coming to church, of being in connect groups, of invitations, of people talking to her. And the coolest part is that she made a decision for Jesus, but then she hated retirement. So she went back to school and substituted and she told me she would come to church every Sunday and tell me how many teachers she shared the gospel with that week and how many of them she invited. So it just multiplied. And all I did was post one thing on my Instagram story, multiply to her life being changed forever and multiple teachers. We, we don't even see the impact that was made. How cool is that? Evangelism is so important and we are here to reach the youth of Edmonton. We are going to outgrow this room and so many students are going to be baptized in 2025. Lives are going to be changed forever, but it starts with you. Let's go. Let's pray. God, God, thank you so much for what you did in the room tonight, God. I just pray over each and every one of these students, God. I pray over every invitation that was sent out today, God, and every single invitation that's going to be sent out this week, every seed that is going to be sown, God. I pray that they are sown into good soil. Would you equip each and every one of these students to share this good news and invite people to fear factor? God, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do through these kids this week, God. And right now, if, if you're in the room and, and maybe this is your first time ever hearing about Jesus or ever hearing this good news that, that our God who created the entire universe sent his son to live a life so he could relate to you and then died on the cross to pay the price that we were meant to pay. And all, all you have to do to have eternal life is make a decision to live for him. And it's simple. We're going to do it right now. But if, you, if you're in the room right now and you feel like tonight is your night to make a decision for Jesus, to live for him, to watch your life change before you, would you just let me know? Just give me a wave or raise your hand. Just let me know. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That's so awesome. You can put your hands down. 
Would everybody in the room just repeat after me right now? Jesus, thank you for sending your son to die for my sins. Today I declare that you are Lord of my life and I'm deciding to follow you. Amen, amen, man, give it up for the life change that just happened, let's go.